Brad Saren. I'm the superintendent of the Sun Prairie Area School District, and we have just an amazing guest uh, today, Ali Berge, former superintendent of the Sun Prairie Area School District, and this is Conversations with Ali. Thank you for being here with us. Well, thank you for the invite. I'm anxious to see how this is going to go. Yeah. <laughs> I've not been interviewed for a long time, so uh, I'm gonna, I guess I'm a little nervous, uh, hoping I can survive it. <laughs> yeah, no, I will not be. Oh. I will not be hard on you. Ed. Well, just be kind to an old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So the the background on this is uh, um, uh, Ali and I have been having breakfasts over the last three years, and inevitably uh, we'll get into just a the background of the Sun Prairie Area School District, and he'll tell me a few stories. And well, over the course of the last three years, um, I've started to write some of these stories down. And, um, and at one point, I thought, these stories are just so wonderful in terms of the identity of the Sun Prairie Area School District, and really Sun Prairie itself, that we felt that it was important to, to, to tell them to a larger audience. And so we're blessed today to have you. Well, thank you for the invite. Uh, I'm anxious to see how this goes. <laughs> so, um, so why don't we start with just a little bit of background uh, for our viewers, just uh, some some of the, the dates and, and uh, background as far as as far as who you are. Okay. Well, I uh, should we start from after high school? Is sure. that want to go back that far? I graduated from high school uh, back in the 1940s and uh, within World War II. I served uh, in the U.S. Navy in the North Atlantic for a year and a half, roughly, on uh, anti-German submarine patrol. And I was discharged in 1946, uh, along with about four million others that were discharged in 1946. Uh, I started college then in September. I went to Luther College in uh, Decorah, Iowa, and graduated there in 1950, and uh, was seeking a teaching position, and um, found it uh, difficult to get a position in Wisconsin. The Wisconsin uh, Teachers Placement Bureau controlled all of the placements of um, candidates. And if you were from out of state, you were on the bottom and the very bottom of the list. So I was applying more or less in Iowa and Minnesota and was offered a pretty nice job in Minnesota when suddenly this name came up, West Lima, I'd never heard of it. Uh, looking for a science, math teacher and baseball and, and uh, basketball coach. And so uh, I applied and uh, I got it. And, and a small community, uh, but wonderful people. Stayed there for five years. And then I moved on to Cedar Grove over on the so-called Gold Coast uh, along Michigan, Lake Michigan. And uh, it's an entirely Dutch community. I was the only foreigner in town. I always said I was Norwegian, but they still accepted me. And I uh, had seven wonderful years there. Uh, Community where the school and the, the church and the home triangle really is effective. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, they were very church-minded, very family-minded. In fact, uh, no stores are, were open there on Sunday, none. Mm. You know, drive-ins or gas stations, no one opened any business on Sunday there. Sure. So it was, had that kind of a family development place. Then I get a call. Uh, from uh, Sun Prairie uh, telling me that they were hiring a new superintendent and uh, they had somehow heard about me. I don't know if it was good or bad, but at least good they called and asked if I would come down for an interview. And I just said, well, let me think about it. And I did. In fact, I didn't think about it. I got in the car and drove down to Sun Prairie, mm -hmm. drove around the place and saw all these basements being dug all over town. I went back home and told my wife, I said, my gosh, you know, that town's going to boom. It's got buildings going up all over the place. And uh, so I called back and applied. And for whatever reason, they made the selection and I ended up here in Sun Prairie. That was in, what, 1962. Sure. And... Uh, I've been here, I was here as superintendent until 1975, for 13 years. Mm -hmm. uh, 1975 was my roughly 25th year as a school superintendent in Wisconsin. 
<coughs> so I thought I should try something different <coughs> and get out. So I applied for the executive director <coughs> of the Wisconsin Association of School District Administrators. Excuse me. <coughs> anyway, and uh, I got that position and was their executive director for 15 years until 1990. And then I retired, I thought. And then I got a call from the state superintendent saying, asking me if I would come up and work with him uh, for a while. That's not exactly how he put it, but how he put it, I'm not going to put it over the phone, <laughs> over the uh, TV network. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so I went up there in, in July and said I'd take a part-time job and uh, as a consultant for two years and uh, I'd work Mondays and Tuesdays and uh, I didn't want to work summers and that was fine. So for two years I worked half-time at the Department of Public Instruction and it, then I finally <coughs> retired. Retired, yeah. And so you were doing 20 standards audits yes. for Burke Grover at the DPI, weren't you? You're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, one, of, one of my absolute favorite stories that I have heard you tell is your story about homecoming. And uh, uh, it, it's just an interesting story because it goes <coughs> back to the days when you were still at home. And so uh, I would I, I would love for you to, to tell us from the very beginning uh, the, the story about homecoming in Sun Prairie. Uh, <clears throat> in 1942, or 40, 42, <clears throat> my folks and myself were driving through Sun Prairie on a Friday night. I had played football earlier that night in high school. <clears throat> right after the game, we took off for uh, over near Dodgeville to a former football coach where we're going to visit for the weekend. <clears throat> As we came through Sun Prairie, my dad said, well, I think I'll stop here for some coffee and pie or something. And we stopped at a little restaurant. Uh, it was called Ann's Cafe at that time. And so <coughs> so we went in there <coughs> and uh, had coffee, but <coughs> I had milk probably. But back in the back of the restaurant, there were just a large group of girls there, all kind of leaning over. Some were crying, and some were just kind of dawdling over there. And another corner was a bunch of boys uh, looking kind of sorrowful, and it just didn't look right. My dad went back to ask them, you know, what is, you know, what's going on, or what happened. And uh, it so happened that they had their homecoming that day. And uh, a boy driving a tractor came around the corner, cut it too short, tractor tipped, and he was killed. So uh, <clears throat> that was my first experience with, with Sun Prairie. Uh, <clears throat> as a result, <coughs> the um, homecomings were canceled forever, or for the future. So when I got the job here, I know they mentioned that there was no homecoming, or I asked about it. They said that this had this tragedy, and so they so just fast forward years later. And now you're the superintendent. Yeah, 20 yeah. years later, I'm back here as superintendent. Yeah, right, right, kind of <coughs> unusual. So uh, <coughs> we um, they they didn't have homecoming anymore because of that, <coughs> and then when they when I asked them about it, I said, well, why don't we start it? And they said, well, can we? And I said, well, why not? So I called in the, the uh, guidance counselor and asked about if they would be willing to do it with the guidance program and, and student council. So they said yes, so we started up the homecoming again. Now, they used to have back in the, back in the 40s, I guess, a big bonfire all the time. So I said, well, if you're going to have a bonfire, let's have just a small one. Now, I think that was probably the only bonfire that there was and it was small they kept it small because we were going you know from a little village into a city mm -hmm. and i think that bonfires were now illegal in town sure so <coughs> so that didn't last long <coughs> so that was my first experience uh with sun prairie back then yeah just an epic story of of uh you as a as a young boy with your parents Stopping in Sun Prairie with your with your parents and and getting some pie and on the very night that that tragedy <coughs> happened, right. and then years later as superintendent, you're the one that brought right. 
from coming back. Interesting, you know. Well, it, when my wife uh, became ill, uh, we moved to an apartment complex and uh, the Regency place. And uh, one day I talking to a fellow that I had met there at a number of times, lived there. And uh, one day I was visiting with him and he, I asked him about his background. I said, well, you, are you a Sun Prairie native? And he said, yeah, sure. And I said, did you go to school here? Because we were about the same age, you see. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so I told him that story. And he said, well, that was my brother. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for telling yep. that story. So anyway.